In this video, we're going to demonstrate the BACnet MSTP integration setup of a CIM300 and a Magna3 pump. Before installing, make sure that you read the BACnet installation and operations instruction manual and the Magna3 installation and operations manual. In order to connect the BACnet card to the system, the BACnet card needs to be installed in the pump and configured. For this video, we've already set up this pump to run on AutoAdapt. If you haven't set up the Magna3 before, we recommend that you watch our video on how to run the startup wizard on a Grunfoss Magna 3 pump. Inside the BACnet box, you'll find the CIM300 BACnet module installation and operations instructions, the CIM and CIU manuals and installation files instructions. You'll find the packet that will have the plug, the screws, the BACnet serial number, as well as the BACnet sticker and the BACnet card. To begin the installation, we'll remove power from the pump, We'll remove the screws from the front cover of the Magna 3. Remove the front cover of the Magna 3. Then we'll remove this screw. Then we'll install the BACnet card on these three posts, making sure not to touch any of the electronics. And it snaps into place. And we'll reinstall the screw. Once the card's been installed in the pump, it needs to be configured. There's six steps that are required to set up the BACnet card. These steps can be done in almost any order. For this installation, I'm using the order from the BACnet CIM300 installation and operations instructions. Step one is to wire the card to the BACnet network. Step two, set the termination resistor. Step three, select the BACnet MAC address. Step four, select the device object instance number. Step five, setting the BACnet transmission speed. Step six, confirm that the card is communicating with the network. This is an overview of the BACnet module it's from page two of the CIM300 BACnet module, INO. Step one is to wire the card to the BACnet network. So we'll run our cable through the bottom of the pump. Depending on the cable you use, the color of the wires may be different. We we'll remove the plug from the packaging. Then we'll connect our red positive wire to position number one. Connect our black negative wire to position number two. And connect our gray ground wire to position number three. Now I've connected our wires. We have our red positive wire on position number one, our black negative wire on position number two, and our gray ground wire on position number three. Then we'll plug this into the BACnet card. Then we'll secure the cable to the earth clamp. So remove one screw from the side of the clamp. You can see here that I've stripped away the outer cover of the cable to reveal the cable screen. Then we'll insert the cable screen in the earth clamp and tighten both of the screws of the clamp onto the screen. According to the ANSI ASHRAE BACnet standard, the cable screen must only be earthed at one end of the segment to ensure correct operation and to prevent earth fault currents. Step two, set the termination resistor. If necessary, you have to set the line termination, C section 3.2 termination resistor, the SIM 300 has two dip switches, switches one and two, for cutting the termination resistor in and out. If this is either the first or the last unit on a leg, you would set these to cut in, so we'd set both of the switches to the on position. Any other positions of the dip switches would be a cutout state or no resistor. For this video, I'm gonna set them to the on position. You just push these up and you can hear them lock in place. Quick note, to ensure a stable and reliable communication, it's important that only the termination resistor on the first and the last unit in the BACnet MSTP segment is cut in, as shown here in Figure 2. Step 3. Select the BACnet MAC address. See Section 3.3, selecting the BACnet MAC address. To set the BACnet MAC address, use the two hexadecimal rotary switches, Switch 6 and Switch 7. You must set the BACnet MAC address decimally from 0 to 127, and it needs to be unique on the BACnet MSTP segment. When you turn these switches, it may be hard to see the numbers, but as you turn it, you can actually feel it click from number to number. For this video, I'll just leave it back at our default. Here's a table of the complete BACnet MAC addresses from page 9 of the CIM300 BACnet module INO manual. Step 4. Select the device object instance number. See section 3.4, selecting the device object instance number. 
You can see the specific function profile here in Figure 6. By default, the CIM300 uses a predefined device object instance number starting with 227, and the last three numbers is the BACnet MAC address. This gives us an instance number range from 227.000 to 227.127. If you want to use the complete device object instance number range, set switch 3 to on, and then set the new device object instance number via the BACnet object in the software. For this installation, we're just going to leave it set to off. Step 5 is setting the BACnet transmission speed. The transmission speed needs to be set correctly for the CIM300 BACnet module before it's ready to communicate with the BACnet network. This would be whatever the network speed is. You can see section 3.5 and figure 7 for the transmission speed settings. For this video, the network speed is 38,400. So let's switch 4 to on. And we'll leave switch 5 set to off. Step 6 is to confirm that the card is communicating with the network. So we'll power on the Magna 3 to demonstrate communication. The CIM300 BACnet module has two LEDs. LED1 on the left is for BACnet communication, and LED2 on the right is for internal communication between the CIM300 and the Grunfoss pump. Here we can confirm that LED2 is permanently green, and the BACnet LED is flashing green indicating that we are communicating with the network. If you have any questions about the functions of the LEDs, see section 4 on page 5 of the CIM300 BACnet module INO. Now that we've completed the setup of the card, we'll remove power from the pump, and then we'll put the cover back on the front of the Magna 3 and tighten the screws. Then we'll return power to the pump. If you need to make any changes to the pump setting once the Magna 3 has been set up on the BACnet network, this can be done locally on the pump without having to remove the pump from the BACnet network. From the main screen on the Magna 3, arrow to the right to settings, then arrow down to bus communication, then press the OK button, and here are the options for changing bus communications. Arrow down to force local mode, and then press the OK button. With this function, you can temporarily override remote commands from the building management system to make changes to the local settings. To enable the function, arrow up to Enable and press OK. And to disable the function, arrow down to Disable and press OK. Once you've disabled the force local mode, the pump reconnects to the network when it receives a remote command from the building management system. Then we'll press the Home button on the Magna 3 to get back to the main screen on the pump. If you'd like to learn more about setting up data points or controlling the pump using BACnet, we recommend that you download the BACnet for Grunfoss Pumps Manual. If you're looking for more information about pump technology in connection to field bus systems, controls technicians and system integrators are encouraged to go to this web link. Once there, select your required product and protocol, and this site will give you all the information that you need for successful setup and integration. And we hope you found this video useful. Thank you.